Juvenile dinosaurs are just beyond rare for many reasons. They're tasty. Adult dinosaurs love to eat them, but also much harder to find them fossilized. You know, when you have a big, robust femur of, say, a stegosaurus, that's much more likely to last for 150 million years through the fossilization process. When you have a really fine, nimble femur of a juvenile, the chances of fossilizing after 150 million years are so tiny. It's really a miracle that this little dinosaur has survived. The juvenile ceratosaur was found in 1996 in Wyoming in what is known as the Morrison Formation. This is a really famous Jurassic vein where we find a lot of dinosaurs like Stegosaurus. This is where Apex was found. And within this area, the ceratosaur was found in an area known as the Bone Cabin Quarry. It's known as the greatest concentration of extinct animals found in the world. It was first opened up by the American Museum for Natural History and all of the most famous dinosaur finds at AMNH came out of this area. And Ceratosaur is probably the rarest of dinosaurs that come from this formation. In this specimen, it's probably the most elegant dinosaur I've ever seen. I mean, it's really remarkable how they were able to so carefully extract these bones from the surrounding matrix. What I think was also really interesting about this specimen was no restoration work was done. It's been displayed in this museum in a sandbox, if you will, where you could see all of the original fossil elements. They weren't mounted, so you couldn't really see what the dinosaur would look like, which for someone like me, that's exactly what I want to see. You know, if I see a dinosaur that's already been restored and mounted, it's always impressive, but in my mind, the first question is, how much of this is real? And we always come back to that documentation and paperwork. You know, this is the the land deeds and the, the lease agreements and photographs of the excavation, photographs of the bone elements, photographs of things in the jackets. In this case, we were really lucky because we kind of have a time machine with us. The person who has done the restoration and the mounting of this specimen was there back in 1996. It was his first job. And while he didn't oversee the excavation, he saw this dinosaur, the original fossil elements, from the beginning. He actually carried the box of fossil elements into the museum. I've worked with this specimen since, you know, right after it came out of the quarry, and I've been involved with it ever since. It was a specimen that just sat in the museum and, and really wasn't getting any scientific work done on it. And I've always had a love for this particular specimen. So I approached them to see if they would be willing to work with me to get the specimen restored and mounted and hopefully transferred into a proper research facility. This incredibly important dinosaur remained unstudied because it was housed in a privately owned museum, not a public repository. Under the Society for Vertebrate Paleontology's guidelines, research on privately owned specimens is prohibited, leaving this fossil scientifically untouched for almost three decades. Ceratosaurus is a Jurassic era predator, kind of the T-Rex of its time, very swift, uh, powerful jaws and teeth. What was very distinctive about Ceratosaurus, and we're talking about Ceratosaurus nasocornus, is a horn right in this area, and then two horns over the eye sockets. I think of this dinosaur as the unicorn of dinosaurs. It's the kind of thing you don't even hope to find because you think it's impossible. And what I think is really important about this specimen is that we have only found four Ceratosaurs ever. And this is the only juvenile ever found. So you can see how much bigger an adult oh, wow. would have been 
can illustrate pretty well the size difference. This is the youngest one, which has some features that we don't see in the other four specimens. Uh, one of those features being the unfused nasal bones, which are fused in all of the other ones. So this one is clearly uh, much younger. And another thing that is very important about this one is the skull is virtually complete. We have every bone represented from either the right or the left side and undistorted. It was found completely disarticulated, meaning apart. So none of the skull bones had fused together yet. So every single bone is able to be looked at individually. We can look at every single surface of every bone. And that makes it uh, pretty important to be able to you know, learn how the bones go together and how they moved and functioned and, and then how they fused as the animal grew. He was really careful when he did this mounting because again, particularly with the skull, some of these bones are paper thin. I think the way he's done it is particularly important scientifically because you can remove each individual piece and study them. I wanted not only to just mount it and make it scientifically accessible so that every original bone is you know, removable from the mount and can be photographed or studied or measured, but also that it's aesthetically pleasing and protects and supports the, the specimen for many generations. So what we've ended up doing is using a forging technique to create custom bracketry for every single bone. You know, a lot of people will prepare those bones and fuse them all together, but they are all individually mounted, so you can take the whole thing apart and really do a deep study of it. Turned out exceptionally well. The metalwork itself, without any of the bones on it, is a beautiful piece that I'm very proud of. But again, the great thing is that we were able to get there before any of this was done, so we were able to see exactly what is real and exactly what was replica and the whole process has been documented and that's really a big part of what all of this diligence is about is so that our clients can know and be confident that they are well informed as to what it is that they're bidding on. We have more interest in dinosaurs now than I think ever before. The truth is that these specimens are lost to everyone if we don't excavate them. I am trying to preserve the science and learn about these things because the more I can learn about them, the more excited I get about them, the more excited everybody else gets about them. And it's just, it's fun, you know, I, it's why I do it. You know, you ask a little five-year-old, a T-Rex, a Triceratops, that's their favorite. You ask a paleontologist, and they're gonna tell you Ceratosaurus is their favorite. This is impossible to find. We have only found four ceratosaurs and then to find a juvenile. It's rare and then the subset of rare, how many are there? Okay, there's only four. How many babies are there? There's only one. This is the only juvenile out there.